All right, we are coming like halfway out of retirement for this one. Um, Dark Souls 3 just got a seamless co-op uh, mod made for it by the same guy that made the Elden Ring seamless co-op mod. Uh, so I'm going to make a video on how to set that up real easily and then also how to uh, set up a randomizer with it because I assume there's going to be a ton of people who are just as nuts about doing a seamless co-op randomizer run with their homies in this as there uh, might be for Elden Ring. So we will go ahead and jump into that and once we get there I'll touch on a few of the potential bugs or problems that you might encounter with it but it should be fine. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually grab the download for Seamless Co-op Dark Souls 3, the most current version of Mod Engine, and the DS3 Static Item and Enemy Randomizer, all of which will be linked in the description. Once you have all those downloaded and unzipped, um, we can progress from here. What I did is I just went and I opened up a folder of my game directory for Dark Souls 3, my downloads folder here, and then the mod engine folder that is unzipped. It's just this one unzipped, tucked off to the side here. Um, as far as setting up just seamless goes, you have some options for that. You can take both of these folders right here, seamless co-op and the executable for it, and you can just go drop that right into your game directory Easy peasy, like so. Go into the Seamless Co-op folder and then into the DS3 Seamless Co-op settings here. You can come in and set yourself a password for your friends. You need a password for it to be able to launch in the first place and for you to be able to join your friends, your friends, and you have to have a matching password. If you do not have a matching password, you cannot join each other. Try to do something unique. Um, other notable things up here are just, you know, allowing invaders or not allowing invaders, debuffs, um, displaying ping, skipping intros, syncing progress, um, scaling of enemy health, staggering, um, boss health, staggering, that kind of stuff. Um, set your password, save it, close it, bing, bang, boom, easy peasy. Um, if you want to just launch that you can just come down here do the launcher exe from your game directory the other option is then instead of putting it directly into your game directory for one reason or another maybe you just don't like putting stuff in your game directory or maybe you want to do the seamless co-op with the randomizer uh, what you actually want to do in that case is you want to just go into the seamless co-op folder itself here and you just want to take the dll right here and the ini from it and go and drop that into the mod engine directory itself. You can also then come over here, take the seamless co-op folder on its own, and you can come put it into the game directory without the DLL or settings stuff, because this is where it will generate like crash dumps and any of that kind of information. Um, the game will automatically generate this folder in here, regardless of whether or not you put it over in there. So you know if you want to save yourself half a second and not move it and have it generate it yourself uh you you can do that but it doesn't make a difference um over here in the mod engine folder um if you are already set with the password and all the stuff you want to do uh you don't have to do anything with it but i'm gonna just reset this real quick because i went back on it so that I could show you guys how things work over in the mod engine side. Um, the other thing that you want to do here to actually make mod engine load the mod for Dark Souls 3 is you want to come up to the config Dark Souls 3 right here, open that up, and then you are going to just want to come to the external DLLs right here, and between the brackets you want to put the ds3sc.dll and you want to put it in quotations. Um, that is so the mod engine will reference this specific file when it is loading. So drop that in there and then just save it and close it. Um, playing seamless applies the same way here as it would if it was inside of the game directory. You can, instead of doing the game directory, you can just come click the launch mod Dark Souls 3 batch file here. And it will just load you in vanilla seamless co-op. 
for setting up the randomizer. There's a little bit of shenanigans that kind of take place here with it because this is it was built for an old version of mod engine not mod engine 2 so it kind of works a little bit different but you can work around that so i'll show you how you want to just go in and open up the ds3 static item and enemy randomizer folder here inside of the randomizer folder you'll find something called the mod engine folder you want to go in there and you want to take both of these things the the d input 8 and the mod engine i and i and you want to come put those directly in your dark souls 3 game directory you want to then go back and you want to take the randomizer folder itself and you want to go and put that directly into your game directory it will not run the randomizer if those things are not in the game directory so you can go ahead and open up the randomizer exe here you can play with the settings however you see fit um, for the sake of the video i'm not really going to edit anything i'm just going to run the seed real quick All right, so once the randomizer is done running, um, there's a little, the, the shenanigans we were talking about are gonna come into play here. Um, inside of the randomizer folder here, once you are done, it will have generated a couple extra folders and other goodies for you. What you want to do is you actually want to grab all of that and you want to go put it into the mod folder inside of your mod engine 2.1 file here. Um, if for some reason you don't have a mod folder in here, um, I forgot to mention this, but you can just make one and put it there. It doesn't matter. Um, with that all done, you can actually just go back into the game directory here and you can delete the randomizer folder. You can delete the D input DLL and you can delete the mod engine I and I all of that stuff out of the game directory if you want to. So it's not trying to forcefully load anything out of the game directory um, you kind of want to do this whole thing where we move things over because the randomizer is actually made for a older version of the game um, or the mod engine itself uh, that came with the randomizer is made for an older version of the game and so it won't actually load up um, if you try to do it that way so hence the workaround of putting it all into mod engine 2.1 um, that's also how we make it so that we are running both seamless and the randomizer from the same place and thusly getting both working and to get your other friends set up with you instead of having them jump through all of these hoops and set up the stuff all the same you can just be the designated person or have a designated person set all this stuff up get their mod engine folder set up all that kind of stuff and then they can go ahead and just simply go up right in and zip it up for you like so and then send you the mod engine folder so that they or you can unzip it and then launch through that and you should have the same randomizer settings the same mod engine settings all that stuff should be um pretty much same across the board because you're just sharing rather than having to have everybody set up their individual stuff and that should help alleviate any sort of um, errors or um, desyncs or anything like that so um, once all that stuff is moved over you can just come over here to the launch mod and start it up so once you're actually in the game and you know you see everything is randomized a um, little bit of jank happens here with the randomizer and seamless being mixed together um, it breaks the naming of the seamless co-op items uh, fortunately for you it's not very hard to tell what it is that you're getting here so you know i wouldn't worry too much about it it doesn't really inhibit your ability to play or do anything but uh, in case you need a rundown the little crystal here is the hosting item this is the object that you would use to open up your session to your friends the joining item, you would use this to join your friends if they have opened a session. This is the invasion item right here. If you want to uh, go harass other people, you can use that. Um, right here is the leaving item, is just for closing your session. If you want to close your session or, you know, something's broken and you want to boot everybody out and then reopen to let people join back. 
um, change rule item, this is what would let you enable um, like PvP or friendly fire or things like that with your session. Uh, dried finger item, this actually is the... will draw invaders and people into your session. Uh, so that's pretty much all as far as setting this up goes. Um, I have done most of a complete run with this so far, and I haven't had anything come up that's been horrendously game-breaking or um, unable to pass. The biggest thing I've noticed is just that the text for those items breaks, but, you know, they were not really made with each other in mind. So, um, can't tell you how things go off the beaten path too much with some of the optional bosses and areas, but um, as far as a just pretty much straight run through, Nothing has broken or ruined anything, so if you guys have any egregious problems, uh, comment, let me know. I can try to take a look and see if there's anything shady or broken going on, but um, at the end of the day, um, the randomizer was made for a slightly older version of Dark Souls 3, so there, it might create some problems, and they weren't made with um, each other in mind, so there might just be some things that are unavoidable, but I haven't encountered them yet, so. Uh, have fun, and good luck with your uh, co-op randomizing. <laughs>